Warning, some of the following images are graphic in nature and might be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. 15-year-old Hope Rippey and three other girls admitted to torturing 12-year-old Cher, then burning her alive. Hope Rippey and Tony Lawrence turned themselves into authorities today. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the story of Shanda Scherer, a 12-year-old girl living in Madison, Indiana, who was severely tortured and burned alive by her attackers. Her murder could easily send chills up your spine. Shanda Scherer, born on June 6, 1979, to Stephen and Jacqueline, was just your all-around American girl. She played softball and volleyball and was even a cheerleading squad member. However, because the relationship between her parents didn't work out, she did end up moving from one area of Indiana to the next more often than not, later settling in New Albany, Indiana in June of 1991 and enrolling at the Hazelwood Middle School. While attending Hazelwood Middle School, Shanda would eventually get into a fight with a girl named Amanda Heverin. Because of the fight between the two, they would later get sent to detention and quickly become friends, moving past that initial altercation between them. However, the friendship blossomed into something entirely different. When Amanda began sending Shauna love letters, the two exchanged these love letters and grew closer together, with Shanda and Amanda attending a school dance together. It was then that Shanda would come face to face with a girl named Melina Loveless. Melinda, the daughter of a Vietnam veteran who was allegedly physically and emotionally abusive to her and her siblings, was the former girlfriend of Amanda Heverin. The pair appeared to have a tumultuous relationship, despite not formally ending the relationship between them. Melinda had already begun dating another girl when Amanda started expressing interest in Shanda. Melinda's hatred for Shanda only continued and worsened when Amanda and Shanda attended a Halloween festival. It was then that Melinda Loveless began threatening her and discussing her desire to end Shanda's life. Unfortunately, things would only continue to become more stressful for Shanda. Not only was Melinda constantly threatening her, but her parents found out about her relationship with Amanda and disapproved. They would then transfer her to a Catholic school in the area by the end of November. Despite transferring schools, Melinda's hatred for Shanda only continued to grow and she would regularly send Amanda Heverin letters in which she was threatening to end Shanda's life. As her hatred of Shanda grew, Melinda, who was 16 at the time, would enlist the help of her closest friend Lori Tackett and Tackett's friends, Hope Rippey and Tony Lawrence, to help her take part in scaring Shanda Sherrod to keep her away from Amanda. On January 10, 1992, Melinda showed the girls a knife and said she planned to use it to scare Shanda. None of the other girls had ever met Shanda, but Tackett knew of Melinda's plans and believed she would be intimidating Shanda to keep her away from Amanda, so the girls gathered in the car together to head to Shanda's dad's home in Jeffersonville, getting directions during a stop at McDonald's before eventually arriving at Shara's home. Melinda told Hope and Tony to knock at the door, pretend to be Amanda's friends, and ask if she wanted to go out with them to stop at Mistletoe Falls to see Amanda. When the girls came, Shanda politely declined because her parents were up but asked the girls if they could come back around midnight. While this infuriated Belinda, Hope and Tony explained they'd come back later for her and that it wasn't a problem. The girls would then head over to Louisville and watch a punk rock show at the Audubon Skate Park. Hope and Tony didn't have much interest in the music but did meet two boys at the event, eventually taking them back to Lori's car for sex. As the clock approached midnight, Melinda made sure everyone was packed up and ready to head back to Shanda's home. She expressed her excitement over killing Shanda but also claimed she was only planning to use the knife to scare Shanda. The four girls arrived back at Shanda's house at 12.30 in the morning, but Tony didn't want to get out of the car to get her. Instead, Lori and Hope would get out and knock for Shanda, while Melinda hid under a blanket in the back seat of Lori's car, knife clutched in her hand. When Shanda opened the door to Hope and Lori, Hope lied and told Shanda that Amanda was still there at Mistletoe Falls, also known as the Witch's Castle. While initially hesitant to leave the home with them, she changed her outfit and eventually agreed to go. Once Shanda was in the car, Hope was asking questions about her relationship with Amanda, ultimately triggering Melinda and causing her to jump up and out of the seat while placing the knife against Shanda's throat. Melinda began asking Shanda if she'd ever had sex with Amanda. Once they arrived at the witch's castle, Melinda continued to hold the knife to Shanda as she cried hysterically. However, this didn't appear to phase the girls as they began bounding her legs and arms with rope to keep her from leaving. Melinda told Shanda her hair was pretty and that she'd love to see how she'd look with it cut short. She also removed her rings from her fingers and had the other girls hold them. 
Lori scared Shanda even further, telling her the witch's castle was home to dozens of remains and that Shanda would be the next to essentially die there. Eventually, scared of being noticed by cars passing by, the girls decided to get back into Lori's car, driving off with her as she begged them to let her go home. When the girls realized they were lost, they stopped at a gas station and hid Shanda with a blanket. While going inside the gas station to ask for help, Lori asked for the directions, and Tony made a call at the gas station to a boy she liked without ever mentioning the abduction happening. They would get lost a second time, and even stopped to chat with guys before heading over to a secluded area near Lori's home. Lori got out of the car and took the lead, having the girls follow her to an abandoned building by a heavily forested area, with tons of trees and grass that would make it difficult for anyone to see them. Both Tony and Hope felt scared, so they decided to stay in the car, while Melinda and Lori ordered Shanda to strip into her underwear. Melinda began punching her. She grabbed her face and began slamming it into her knee, causing Shanda's braces to cut the inside of her mouth. Melinda then attempted to slice Shanda's throat, but the knife wasn't sharp enough to work. Hope would later get out of the car and help hold Shanda down so that Lori and Melinda could stab her. After stabbing her multiple times, they proceeded to strangle her until she became unconscious, placing her in the trunk of Lori's car and informing both Hope and Tony that she was officially dead. The girls would then travel to Lori's house and clean up. Before hearing screaming coming from the car, Lori ran out to the car, stabbed Shanda a few more times using a paring knife. By 2.30 a.m., Tony and Hope decided to stay at Lori's, while Lori and Melinda went for a country cruise heading over to the area of Cannon. It was during this ride that the two would hear Shanda crying and making gurgling sounds, causing Lori to stop, open the trunk, and check on Shanda. As soon as they opened the trunk, she sat up as her eyes rolled to the back of her head. Lori grabbed the tire iron and began beating Shanda. It's believed that the two girls sexually assaulted her with this tire iron repeatedly during their road trip. After driving for hours, Melinda and Lori headed home and cleaned up. Hope asked the girls what happened to Shanda and they told her all about what they did to her while on their country cruise. The girls were talking so loudly about what happened that Lori's mother woke up, scolded her for being out so late, and told her she needed to take her friends home. What she did, but, before dropping them off, she'd drive over to the burn pile and open the trunk, encouraging the girls to get a look at Shanda. Tony refused to look at Shanda, but Hope got out and sprayed her with Windex before saying, You're not looking so hot now, are you? Lori would then drive the girls to a gas station, before putting some gas in the car and more into a two-liter container, and heading over to Lemon Road. Tony stayed in the car as Lori and Hope rolled Cher into a blanket, carried her body to a field, and then poured gasoline on top of her, setting her on fire. Even with all of this, Melinda believed Shanda was still alive, so the girls would return to the area and pour the rest of the gasoline on top of her before heading to McDonald's for breakfast. They laughed and joked around about the appearance of Shanda's burned body, stating that it looked like their breakfast sausages. It was then that Tony would call a friend and tell them about the murder. Before Lori dropped her and Hope at their homes, they'd later go to Melinda's house, where a friend, Crystal Watton, came over and learned about the murders. The three girls would then head to Amanda's home to tell her about the murder. Amanda didn't believe the girls killed Shanda until they showed her the trunk of the vehicle with the blood all over it. Melinda went up to Amanda, told her she loved her, and kissed her before making her promise not to tell anyone about Shanda's murder. Amanda promised not to say anything and went back inside. It was later in the morning on January 11, 1992, that two brothers who liked to hunt would spot a body by the side of the road. While they initially didn't think it was a real person, they got out of the car and quickly noticed that not only was it a body, but it was the body of a child badly burned. They called the cops where detectives quickly began setting up a crime scene and gathering forensic evidence. Because her body was placed in a suggestive position, it was clear that this was intentional, but the cops thought it could have been drug-related. At the same time, Stephen, Shanda's dad, noticed she wasn't home. He called his ex-wife, her mother, at around 1.45 p.m., before meeting up with her to file a missing persons report. They continued calling her friends and looking for her to no avail. Close to 8.30 that night, both Tony and Hope walked into the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office with their parents providing statements about the victim and letting authorities know that the unidentified burn victim was, in fact, Shanda Scherer. They mentioned Melinda and Lori and discussed some of the events that took place that night. 
Detectives used dental records to positively identify Shanda as the victim found by the two brothers earlier that morning. Both Lori and Melinda were arrested on January 12th, both of whom were tried as adults for the murder of Shanda Scherer. All four girls were eventually prosecuted for their roles in Shanda's murder. Lori and Melinda both received sentences of 60 years in Indiana women's prison. With Lori released in 2018 and Melinda released in 2019, Hope was sentenced to around 35 years, with Tony sentenced to a maximum of 20. All four girls accepted plea bargains to reduce their sentences, and as of 2022, they're all free despite the horrific events that unfolded that day. Shanda's father died of alcoholism in 2005. It was said that he couldn't overcome the pain of losing his daughter, so he drank himself to death. Thanks for watching you guys. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. See you on the next one.